Hi and welcome to episode 38 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Is Reportage and I'm a wedding photographer too. Delighted to have the fantastic Menina Cognes Menina with us today. Raquel and Daniel are some of the best wedding photographers in Portugal and indeed the world with a quite stunning nine story award under their belt and seven reportage awards too. And they're such lovely people as well and share so much today, including the story behind their brand name, learning from each other and arguing sometimes, tips on story awards and their experience judging for us, what success means to them, family time in lockdown and much more. Before we get on to Raquel and Daniel, just a heads up that at the time this episode is released, there is under 48 hours left to submit to our latest round of awards. Submit by 2359 BST on 24th of July 2020. Our very first documentary family awards deadline is also the same day and time on our brand new sister site, This Is Reportage Family. Also, just to let you know that this interview was actually recorded on June 19th, 2020. Right, over to Daniel and Raquel. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hi, um, how are you? I, I'm totally fine, yeah. How's, how's things with you? Yeah, good, very good, yeah. Lots of work, not, not photography work, mm-hmm. but... <laughs> but yeah, in uh, photography, there's no work at all, almost right now, because of yeah. this mm. COVID situation. Everything stops. It's now. mad, isn't it? You guys are in Portugal, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. in Portugal. What, what are the what's it like at the moment there in with laws are are weddings even able to go ahead at the moment or yeah. small weddings yeah there, there are uh, contradictive uh, laws right now b- because theoretically you can uh, join only 20 people at the same time in the same space right. but in uh, in other hand uh, there's uh, people that says that uh, weddings can follow the um, restaurant rules so so they can they can have like a hundred or a hundred fifty people as long people. as they keep small group yeah so uh, it's okay. not really very clear yeah. how things should should happen anyway we have everything postponed until august yeah yeah we probably will have some weddings from august on but okay there no Oh, it's mad times, isn't it? That's yeah. hope. Hopefully, your August ones will happen, though. And the ones that you've postponed, ha- have your have your couples been okay? Have you lost any to cancellations, or is it all just uh, been postponed? No, we, are, we are really lucky. Yeah, yeah, we have the best couples in the world. I think <laughs> there, there is only one that uh, that chose uh, um, a date that we are already booked. Okay. for uh, okay. uh, September and we don't know because they will probably postpone it again but let's see let's see what happens but it's it's everything really peaceful uh, with, uh, people with are very everyone. understanding yeah. with us and, and also we are very understanding yeah, with them it's it's no one it's no one's fault this copy thing that's so, so uh, true yeah that's so true that's so true about being us being understanding with them and then being understanding with us but yeah we're all yeah. in this together aren't we we are all in this together um but, by all, the way it's... we all want to do the wedding we want and them also yeah. so mm, that's true that's just... true Oh, it's so good. By the way, it's just so lovely talking to you both again. So I've met yeah. you um, a couple of times in, in England and in Portugal. And um, yeah. this is a first for me to be talking to two other people at the same time as well, which is, which is cool. I, I hope it's not very confusing. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you speak one over the other and we complete sentences, one from the other, but it's okay. Oh. We, we, we live like 24 hours per day together, so it's not. We are the Siamese almost. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that always that makes me think of the lady in the tramp film with the with the Siamese cats in there. But anyway, yeah, let's 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 talk about your kind of beginnings then. So your brand name, I'm gonna pronounce this incorrectly, but I'm gonna try, is is um <laughs> Menino Conhesa Menina, which I think very me- nice. Very nice. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> which I think means boy meets girl. Um, can you tell us about that? How you met? How you how how you came to be and and work together? Yeah. Well, um, yes. Well, we met working in architecture. Okay. We are, we are both architects. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. So back in two thousand nine, we met in an office. 
Yeah, uh, Raquel was working there in a, in a big um, in a big building, big big project for a big building, a cruise uh, terminal here okay. in Porto. Uh, and uh, I went uh, I, I went there uh, looking for a job. Uh, actually, a colleague of ours was working there and was getting out from from that job and called me if I wanted the, the, his his place. Okay. And I went there for an interview, and and uh, then uh, um, a beautiful girl came in the, the room, and the boss wanted to to present uh, to, to, to introduce, yeah, to introduce us, and then uh, I think that was was lot. It was not at first sight because then we had a difficult year because my mind was very. Confused and uh, and there was a rough year. Okay. Well, then we sorted out everything and and the the, the love story started. Oh, that's so cute. That's so nice. I didn't know you met uh, in those circumstances. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And then how did how did you start to work together with your wedding photography? How did that begin? Well, uh, during the the university, I I was a photo amateur. And uh, and uh, when when I left that job with the, that was working with Raquel, I, I started doing some architectural uh, photography. Okay. Um, and uh, that that started me in the, the, the profession of photography. And uh, during that time, uh, Raquel was doing a um, postdoc uh, in architecture. In architecture. Okay. And, uh, in one of the trips. Uh, me taking her to the to the to classes, we came up with an idea of doing this. Uh, the thing is that in in architectural photography, things were not easy because it was the this uh, crisis 2010. Uh, and right. That moment, there was not a lot of work for architects, so mm -hmm. neither for architectural photography. So and architects don't pay very well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so um, things were not easy in that field. Yeah. So we right. came up with the idea: why not? Wait, wait. Maybe we can try. We could do this. And uh, and during a, a trip to the to the university, we came up with the name because we were seeing a film. It's called Five Hundred Days of Summer. Oh, okay. I've heard uh, of that, but not seen it. Okay, cool. Uh, it's, it's, it's the day before. Yeah, it's. It's a cool, it's a cool film, and and uh, I really like the way that uh, how the film starts. It's um, this is a story of boy meets girl, but this is not a love story, and I, th that really uh, got sticked in in my head. And and uh, our first name was actually uh, this is a story of boy meets girl, but th then then we had to shorten it a little bit because it was too long. Cool, I think. <laughs> I think so. I think it's a great brand name, by the way, because it's because it's 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 you guys, but it's also yeah, weddings as well and yeah. their love story, yeah. which yes. I think is very yes. cool. So it's you decided. Oh, yeah. sorry, Raquel. Yeah. Go on. Sorry. Go on. No, no. I was just saying that it's autobiographic for us, mm. but also for the couple. So mm. there is also a, a funny story about about us and about the way we met. Uh, Photography actually has a very uh, a strong uh, paper in the way that we met uh, well, in the role. Yes, uh, it played uh, an important role in our because meaning. Back then, I was doing a, a photo blog, and uh, I showed it to Raquel, and I think she felt in love before with my pictures <laughs> than oh. with me. It may be. Uh, so, so it's. Uh, <laughs> it's important for for our relation then, oh, then that's uh, that's so cute though then <laughs> and now how photography is yeah so important to you guys and yeah kind of brought you together that's very cool very that's romantic really, really true yeah <laughs> and then so you decided you wanted to try weddings how how did you get your first wedding together it was a friend of a friend that was getting married and she she didn't know any uh, photographers that could please her. She it was all very traditional in the the city that she was living. So she asked uh, Danielle, Danielle mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, if she if he could or if yeah. he wanted to do it I and think. it was really at the time, I only had uh, my street photography portfolio to show her, yeah. and okay. then that's what I what I had, and that's why I showed her. But showed I her. think I think that that was really interested her because you didn't want the typical wedding yeah. photo. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, cool. So you did that wedding, and you both shot that first wedding together, did you? Well, I shot that <laughs> wedding. I okay. was so playing with was playing with the camera with my secondary camera. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I, I did one photo, really, really one. one. The best, the best photo, the best photo. One, one of the best, <laughs> one of the best. Because when when I met Raquel, she she couldn't uh, no. take photos. I, I learned everything photo. from him. Oh, really. cool, All okay. the technical parts I learned yeah. from him. So. And also, I uh, I am an autodidact. I I didn't uh, learn anything from from any school or anything. And then I, I taught, taught what I know to to, to Raquel. And then we, we started growing together. But this this first wedding was really really nice because uh, there was a moment during the, um, the cocktail that she she was using a 30D, a Canon 30D, and the okay. macro. Uh, and she she um, closed the, the lens at, at maximum at f thirty two thirty two. All right. And she came to me like, oh my god, this isn't focusing. This isn't focusing. And she, I was, broke it. <laughs> she was she was doing uh, really um, uh, low speed low speed uh, uh, yeah. and everything was blurry. And, <laughs> <laughs> so, That's I funny. didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I did one photo because it was. Uh, in my mind, the, the position, the composition, everything, mm -hmm. just had to, to press mm -hmm. the button, and and then I learned everything from from then. Oh, yes. and this cool. photo, this, this photo she's taking it was when the when the bride was getting in the the church. I was position. Uh, my position was in front of the of the priest taking taking photos of the of the bride getting in and Raquel was on the chorus you say this right above uh, the entrance yeah oh, okay uh, the place that is above the entrance I don't know the, the name I don't know the name I think it's a chorus we call it like chorus in like it's a place where the chorus uh, sings sing. yes. oh cool the choir singing yes cool okay uh, okay okay and uh, she was positioned there to to um, to take that photo Ah, cool. And it was just wait and push the button. <laughs> well, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Is it? No, there was much more to to, to grow from then. Mm. And then, so how many how many years ago was that first wedding? When was that? Two thousand eleven. So nine years. Wow, nine years. Cool. So then, after that. I was still in the architectural office yeah. then, and I kept for a couple of years. She only left in 2013. Right, okay, cool. So, wow, still seven years ago. That's that's cool. And and so now, do you shoot every single wedding together? Do you ever shoot any on your own? Is it always together? We always, we are always shooting, together. Yeah, we are it's always the, together. The, the rule is that. Mm -hmm. we do it but, but we already shot a couple of, of weddings alone because uh, really two weddings alone three actually because the first <laughs> one was when Raquel Raquel uh, we, we had two two kids and uh, in the second kid and we planned we planned the, the kids as uh, for them to 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 born in uh, March or April, April, so we could we could continue working. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, the second kid um, interfered uh, with Raquel shooting one of the weddings, so I went with uh, with another another girl. Uh, okay, cool, cool. Well, I bet you missed her. And I um I love what a quote from your website, which is you say. We photograph together always, two left eyes, two fingers on the trigger, only one heart, which I love. It's so romantic. Um, <laughs> it's It sounds so idyllic as well. You're, do you never argue? You know, do you always have the same vision for your photography, for the business? We are always arguing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Mm. You, 
we we get better, are we? We I, I always I always say as a, as a metaphor that in, in this in this relation, this couple, uh, I am the wings, and Raquel is the the stone that uh, that allows me not to burn myself in the um, in the sun, and I am the wings that allows her not to be still in the same place for for all her life. So, so, yes. so with this, we, we reach a good equilibrium, not, not being uh, too ambitious or too sad. But we do argue a lot. Yes. <laughs> Even in some, in some weddings, not a lot, but in mm -hmm. two or three weddings that we had problems, I don't know exactly why now, but um, and that made us have only a little uh, frictions during during yeah. the world game, but mm. and it's not oh. good when it happens. It's yeah. really it makes me really feel bad. But. <laughs> Oh, it's normal though, isn't it? That's normal. And oh, I love the quote uh, about the wings. And yeah, that's so lovely. You guys are so romantic. It's so lovely. Yeah. You are cheesy. You are cheesy <laughs> <laughs> um, and do you, you know, when you're shooting together, do you have set roles? Like one of you does the bridal prep and the other does the groom? Or do you change things around? How, do, how does it work for you? Not, not that kind of separation. Usually, we try to do to both um, be together on on bride and on groom. Uh, cool. It's a complementary vision. Um, often, mm. it's we, we have two different kinds of sensitivity. Sensi sensitivity, uh, and and uh, I don't know how to say the word. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and and I, I think that we complement each other uh, very well. The, our vision complements uh, one of the other. Uh, mm -hmm. At first, right now the roles changed a lot, but I first I used to say that I am more of a scenographic person. I, okay. I tend to use more uh, wide angle lens and uh, to give uh, a whole context of something. And the vocal was more of pale portrayed and um, this kind of more um, delicate things but but these these things evolved a, a lot during a, yeah. I think it, it had something to do with confidence I was less confident on on the um, photographic um, I, I don't know it, it's um, how can I explain it <laughs> oh but it's so it's really I think it's so lovely to hear and it's quite, yeah, different, I think, um, because most people seem to split up, you know, and, and I think it's really lovely that you capture, um, you're always together kind of capture. And then you have those different viewpoints, though. And as you say, you see things differently and you capture things differently. And, and then the couples get all those. I think that's really lovely. Uh, which are the, the results, the reportage, I think. Mm, Although, definitely. Uh, not only because four eyes can see more than two eyes, but I, I think our approach it's it's it reflects our personality. I'm more I'm more of a, um, a guy that doesn't be rough, a rough guy. I don't think too much. I do things uh, without. Him. I'm I'm very impulsive, and Raquel she's very controlled. She's really she thinks every word that she speaks. And, and that reflects in our photography, I think, um, and this complementation that we get between our our two works, I think, it gets a really nice yeah. story. Mm. So, oh, I think honestly, I think it's I think it's brilliant. And again, it kind of comes back to your boy meets girl uh, name as well, because you're yeah, you're showing a female and a male perspective on everything that's happening through the day and not just female and male but just different perspectives and and they complement complement each other as you say so i think that's really lovely that you're you're able to offer that to your couples and it's pretty yeah it's great he fits but he's really tall so he has a high vision <laughs> and a heart so you have compliment in, in many ways that's cool. No, on there, a are, there are some moments that are, are um, uh, established that uh, I, I never, I almost never do details. I never do the detailed shots of rings or 
when there are we don't we don't do these details in every wedding but when the bride and groom wants some details i never do that because it's not i i, I get um, <laughs> i get like uh, goosebumps goosebumps doing that the goosebumps bad yeah. goosebumps like i don't oh. I like to do that and raquel does it uh, okay um, good shots are all always for me because it's too boring for him to <laughs> end over <laughs> Oh, that's cool. It's so interesting to hear how you work and work together. It's it's, it's awesome. Um, cool. Let's let's change tack slightly now. Let's change tack. Let's go on. Are you? I guess you've got children, but do you have time to watch kind of TV series? Do you watch Netflix? Have you got any good recommendations? <laughs> um, TV series. Well, for me, there was a world before. Um, Breaking Bad and the world after. It, it's really strange because the topic of the series has nothing to do with me. It's uh, drugs and it really is not my my kind of series at the first at the first year. But it it's really so engaging and so the photography mm -hmm. is very good. And totally so agree. It, it was it was that one that's. I could not stop seeing from the first episode to the last. Oh, that's cool. It's brilliant, isn't it? It is so good. Yeah, really good. How about you, Daniel? It's from that one that I absolutely love also. I, I Twin Peaks is one of my favorite series. Of oh, cool. I've only seen the first original series of that, but I did love it. I need to watch more. Are the other series good as well? No, I only I only saw the original also. I I, I never saw the the, 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 the this this last continuation. Right. Uh, but I really really love I, I love Lynch uh, completely. Ah, okay. uh, cool. Yeah. Cool. That's all good. Cool. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to another question, which I like. What? Yeah. The first thing that comes to your mind with what makes you happy. It's my kid's smile. Oh. Yeah, I couldn't think of something else either. Oh, well, that's super. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so, actually, I would say to be the four of us together in those those days, like like the beginning of the lockdown, we were the four at home. After a few weeks, it started to be hard because they were already uh, saturated of being. Mm on for so long but in the beginning in the first days it was really cool we built a fort in the living room we were sleeping all together in the sofa be, mm -hmm. under the this blanket that was that was the, the castle and uh, it was really really amazing oh that's cool and i've read i think one of your recent blog posts which starts yeah. with yeah it starts with the first line is our neighbor has a rooster which i love i love <laughs> can you can you explain to our listeners about that it's beautiful family photography by the way in that post it's so good and i'll include a link to it on on the post but yeah so your neighbor really has a rooster he's yeah. not he's yeah. singing right now <laughs> <laughs> maybe that singer in the tape uh, actually, we found out then that it's not a neighbor, it's a rooster that came, I don't know, from where, and it's living um, across the street. There is a, a school that it's closed now, it's living there. Okay. Uh, alone. The neighbors uh, feed him sometimes, they go there. So he's not going anywhere. It's, it's <laughs> like the pet of the neighborhood. No? Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the pet, yeah. That's funny. But that your whole your whole blog post is so lovely about this kind of COVID time, but obviously very honest as well and how it is, um, you know, anxiety inducing for us all. But your post is so lovely about your fam your family time together and appreciating that. And yeah, just beautiful images as well. Has it been nice in a way having that time and then and, and, and photographing um, your kids and that, that time together? Yes, it is. Uh, um, during this first, like first month, month we would photograph a lot. Right now, as we are changing home and I'm doing some of the works in in the new home, I don't have uh, a lot of time to photograph. And Raquel also right because now. she's with the kids, so yes, taking care of them. Right. Yeah. And also, the, it started to be hard to, to stay at home for so long. 
the kids started to get um, get sick of it. Yes, they, they, more, they get full more of it. reactive and annoyed. So right now we are trying to actually the big one is going to school already. So we are trying to go, get more in the real life. But yes, no. the I, we always try to photograph them. It's it's part of uh, building our own family history. You know, it's it's mm. this thing that we are doing for the couples in the wedding day. We are we are just being in their lives for for a while, and we are giving them a little bit of um, visual it. legacy to for them to keep. Mm. So we try to do it also for us. I'm it's, a bit nostalgic, so I could live in. <laughs> If I could to, to, to freeze the moment and stay there, you know, to, to freeze the kids as they are now, mm. it's the only way I can I can have to 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 keep them like this is photog- photographing them. So yes, yeah. to- oh, that's so true. I so understand that, and I I need to do it more. But it, yeah, it's beautiful. As I say, um, if if anyone's listening whilst running or cycling, do head to the site this is reportage.com and i'll include um a link to that blog post with your the fam your family photography in there which is just beautiful and the words is just is lovely um yeah you mentioned there how you are renovating at the moment as well a new house how that's just exciting how how is that going are you much of a, a diy um expert how's it going i i, I really like DIY. It's, I'm, I'm, it's a lot. Is if he could, he would do everything by himself. Yes, <laughs> but Ooh. it's a lot of work. Right now, I, I was, I was, uh, um, I don't know, uh, putting plaster on some walls and okay. this kind of stuff. I finished that part. I have to um, uh, send paper them, and then uh, right now I'm starting painting and then uh, doing some. Uh, I think the thing is that the plan was to to hire people to do this, but okay. since we are home with no weddings, we we don't have work right now in our field. So yeah. I have all the time in the world right now. So and I you like doing this? He loves doing this. So it just yeah. makes sense. But yeah, I'm an architect, so this is in, this is in my blood to 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 do houses. Right, I'm no. doing mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's cool that you're enjoying it though as well. That's great. And I I just to say I would not have a clue at all. I am the most impractical person ever. I hardly know how to put in a light bulb. So much respect <laughs> to you. Um when when do you think you'll be finished and moving in then? Uh, we should be finished in like two or three weeks and we should move in move in before August. Yes. Uh-huh. Next month. Yeah. Oh, that's should. exciting. That's cool. Um, you, you guys, by the way, just to go on to something different, but something, I've got so many questions for you. It's cool. But um, you guys have won nine story awards from us, which is absolutely amazing. And I think, you know, it's testament to how consistently creative and good you are. You know, you're so good. What, what do you think is key to consistent, great coverage throughout the day, which I guess, you know, is uh, all of our is that all of our goals is to, you know, to, to have consistent creative coverage throughout the day. What, what's your advice? That's a really difficult one. Because, I, I think it's easy. Because, no, no, the question is difficult. But the answer, I, I think it's, it's easy because I don't think, when I'm shooting, I don't think about consistency. I don't think about that. I, I just shoot. For me, mm-hmm. the answer is, um, I'll be a bit in English. Uh, attention, it's not really attention, it's alert. How do you say? Oh, yeah. alertness, is it? Or? Yes, uh, when you are ready all the time. If you if you keep yourself um, ready for, for, for the moment that is happening in front of you, you'll be, you will be able to, to collect them, all of them. Mm. The, the way that you keep these things consistent, I think it's thinking with your heart. If if you think, if you if you lift up the, the, the camera and shoot because something inside you moves you to shoot that photo, uh, you don't have to to worry with consistency because everything it's consistent with your personality with yourself. With yourself. Yeah. So you are the reference 
or the consistency consistency of your work. That's that's what yeah. I what I think about this. That's very cool. That's a great quote. That's so good. I love that. I say I totally agree with you as well. Awesome. That's so cool. When when you have to think too much to to make your work work, there's a problem there. You you your work should be should flow easily. Should flow genuinely. That's the the, the most uh, uh, that, that that's the easiest and strongest way to be consistent. I, uh, Right. Totally, totally agree I think that is really great and great advice that really is um so along with if I get this right there is it pixel videographers um you you created the combined photography and videography multi-day workshop um steam and steel which you held in in Porto uh last year I would have loved to have attended but I couldn't make it um how how did that come about you know that that combined photography and videography workshop was it was it nerve-wracking organizing and creating such an event did you enjoy it yeah sorry lots of questions there but this is very interesting <laughs> it, was really... it was difficult to organize it's it's but a lot it of was, lot of work it was mm. so all the preparation and organizing process happened during the summer yeah we were high season photographing the editing and at the same time organizing this. And that was the hardest part, yeah. I think, because yeah. we, we had the time and it was demanding, but it yeah. was amazing. The, <laughs> we really loved it. The idea came up in a, in a we were dining together or something we are, like we that. We are really with, friends, yeah. really, really good friends yeah, with yeah. Pixel. They are, they are really close. Uh, we, we, and they, they are, we are really close, but we met them uh, working, working in, uh, in uh, Wedding. weddings. And we, we got really good friends. Um, and we were talking about that and, uh, okay, let's do it. Let's, let's, uh, let's move on with it. And, and the then... idea of, of making, uh, at the same time, uh, photography and videography has, has a lot to do with, um, we work together, usually, in the wedding. We are so... a team. When, when, when you are working with a videographer, you are a team together. And, and there is a lot of stuff that, uh, a videographer can teach that it's interesting for me yeah. as a photographer and, and the, also the the the, 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 the opposite way. the other way mm -hmm. we can photographers can teach a lot to to, to videographers and and the uh, lucas piatek and monica frias they were amazing with that and also tom robach and uh, the tom robach was more in uh, seo uh, stuff uh, right. but they perform really 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 well oh that's cool I think it's a great idea yeah I would have loved to have come did you did when you, all the organizing was over and it came to the event itself um were you nervous on the days or was it just fun and relaxed how yeah did you did you enjoy it I was nervous with the organization because because it's are, difficult <laughs> but the, we really complement each other I was nervous for me it's, it's <laughs> I, I like to talk. I'm doing <laughs> the other way around. In the organization, everything was smoothly going, and I, it was really working. I was not nervous with that, but the the talking part was. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's what I would be like as well. I totally get that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, I, th I think it was great, and I love the name Steam and Steel. I think that that's very cool. It took place in. Um, an hostel that is located in the old uh, train station in Porto. Uh, so old it, that it's still active, it, but yeah. it's that there are two train stations in Porto. One is the oldest, and this this one it's a very ancient building. And uh, these the, the the name comes from there. Yeah, it had this mood, this uh, industrial yeah. industrial mood. The building was amazing, so yeah. really very. Nice. The hostel is so. Cool. Oh, I just sound cool. I think it's great to have kind of inspirational surroundings um, when you're doing something like that as well. So I think that's very cool. Well, if you ever do it again, um, the workshop, you know, I'll, I will definitely try and, and try and get there because I'm sure it'll be brilliant. I think we will. We, we were thinking about doing it this year, but probably it won't happen this year because, because of, of COVID. COVID. Oh, yeah. Next year, probably. Maybe to do it now. Uh, now, I mean, in November again. Yes. Let's see. Uh, cool. Cool. Let you know. If we, if we do it, we will let you know. 
definitely do let me know yeah and that, that'd be great and I'll, I'll try and come awesome um has there been a specific turning point in your career you know something perhaps a certain wedding or a certain award or anything that's had a major impact on on your career i don't think so i think i think it's very it, it's um it's not the, our our work it's as a linear curve of, of evolution it, there, there is not a big step it's it was step step by step wedding by wedding yeah. mm. uh, that we we started to grow of course of course we we grew more during the first years than than in these last three or four years because because uh, uh, you you start to to improve in in smaller percentage when you know more, I think that's so true. Mm. I cannot identify a, a turning point either. No, that's cool. I mean, it's good that it's been like kind of natural kind of progression like that. I think that's great. And it's a sign of just a really good business. And yeah, and great, great photography, yeah. which I, I love your work, guys. I just think your work is 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 so fab. And um, one of your specific reportage awards, um, which was, I, it appears to be during the ring exchange, I think, and it's super close, um, taken from directly below their hands. Uh, I think it's the exchanging of the rings, isn't it? Yes. yes. Yeah. I, I lo- it's so awesome. Can you can you tell us about that shot? I, it's so close and so intimate and such a different viewpoint to what people normally see. Um, yeah, I love it. Photo. It's a very, very, very quick photo. The, the priest probably didn't even notice me doing it it's it's uh, that, that that photo specifically it's mine okay. um okay. the camera it's uh, everything it's prepared it's uh, manual focus uh, i i i i'm i looked to to the to the spot yeah, where sure. yes i measured and imagined where where the camera would be and and uh, programmed the camera for for that distance and uh, the exposure also it's it's uh, manual i went there i i kneed down myself put my head away so my head wouldn't be included in the in the camera because it's a wide angle it's probably 24 uh, millimeters Uh, and then i took two or three shots to be sure that got the best moment and walk away i I think the the priest didn't even saw me doing that that's (laughs) so cool so cool uh, um, point of view it's something that we we search a lot not this one specifically but uh, not the typical points of view it's uh, to, to try to see the, the thing from another perspective I, I I think that this this specific point of view to see things from down <laughs> upward and, or from up downward has a lot to do with us being architects yeah. because uh, architects then tend to simplify their point of view so they can draw and explain better their their ideas and yeah. i think this has a lot of influence in our in our photography you as you see we have often um how do you say um, also, um, um front views you know very flat front views very okay. This is not something that we plan or that we are thinking when we are yeah. photographing, but it's a natural way to, to position. Yeah. To Again, it's consistent with our personality, our... And yes, and we, with our... Um, approach, way of view. Mm-hmm. Um, From yes, uh, the... Formation, our... Uh, uh, we will do a lot this kind of direct translations yeah. that doesn't mean anything that result in education yes uh, cool. I find that so interesting. That's really interesting again. And yeah, and um, thank you for talking about that image. I'll include that image in the post. If anyone's listening, do head to, to the site and I'll include that specific image. It's so cool. I love the, the fact that the priest probably didn't know you took it. And, and yet it's so intimate and so different. So yeah, very, very cool. Um, and whilst we're on this subject, actually. Oh, sorry, Raquel. Go on. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, you go on. <laughs> sorry again. I was saying that you have to be very confident to do it. So it could, I wouldn't, I would not be 
have the the uh, coldness of spirit to go there and do it and get back to my to my place. <laughs> A while ago, you you were asking if we have uh, certain roles when we are photographing, photography, and uh, we were saying that Raquel usually does the the details and things like that. Also, there is another thing when there is something that is really stressful, uh, a very uh, stressing situation. Usually, I am the one that uh, steps forward because not not because uh, Raquel is not capable to do it, but uh, she's more delicate. She's she's a more delicate person and and feels the stress more more intense in, in a more intense way. And I deal very well with uh, stress situations. Like I guess I, I do my best work if I'm stressed. I do my best work if I have the wrong lens in my in, in the body because I have to think in, in another way. And this is the kind of, of situation that I like to, to, to encounter, to, to oh, find. Wow, that's find cool. It. That is cool. I love the way you just, you work so perfectly together and play to both of your strengths and both of your uniqueness. And I, I relate to it all, like, because I would be very stressed, like Raquel as well. And, and yeah, sometimes pressure, I, you know, sometimes strive on. It's just all very interesting. It's cool. Um, and you, you were judges for us back in collection eight, which is a while, a while ago now, actually. Um, from your experience as, as being judges, and winning, you know, so many awards yourselves. Do you have any specific tips for people entering, you know, for, for the story awards or for the reportage awards? Just just as your experience as, as a judge. Yes, uh, mostly for the, the story awards. Uh, it's that w when you submit, try to submit only very, very, very good photos in, in, the, the, in the group that you submit. Don't, don't submit anything that, it's there only to show that something happened, even mm. if the photo is not interesting. If it's not, if it's not interesting, the photo shouldn't be there. Mm. Uh, and try you don't to have be... to have the twenty photos. Yeah, you can have seventeen or, or fifteen. Mm. We have some. We have some awards with with fifteen, and we have some awards that almost don't have dance or almost don't have uh, uh, getting ready because because they maybe they are not very very interesting. Mm. Not the in the to, yeah. to tell that, that yes, from the first to the last, everyone they have to be really, really good photos, and this consistency that you were uh, that you were speaking of, it's really important. They don't have to be all black and white, or they don't have mm -hmm. all color or in the same palette of, of colors, but they have to speak to each other. Each photo that you that you move on has to speak with the previous and with the next one. It's a transition to the next uh, part of the story. That's really important, I think. Mm. That's cool. To search for this um, connection between the images and to, to build a, a strong related group of images. And then to look after this, to look at each, each of them isolated and see does this has is strong enough to be there would this alone win an award they don't have to be all winners but they have to be all good yeah mm. great advice yeah. great advice that's cool and did did um did you enjoy your time judging for us i know there must have been a lot of things to look at but did you enjoy it great well, and this that we are that we are these advices we learn then, yeah. looking at the at those stories that we were. I learned judging. a lot doing the, the this judging yes. uh, this judging work for for uh, this was, reportage because I think it's, it's these conclusions for, we made yeah. them there. Yeah, uh, that's cool. In this award winning for us, it's life changing. The the, the, <laughs> yeah. the um, being judges because I, we learn a lot doing that work because there is there is um, things that you see that clearly don't don't uh, wouldn't be winners and then we did some retro retrospective to the things that we submit and and uh, we looked at them and and, and saw uh, clear errors in what we were submitting and I think we got better. Uh, that. that's cool that's really that's really interesting and yeah cool and thank you again for judging because i know it's a lot of time but but thank you so much guys it's it's awesome <laughs>
if you need us again, can send us. Oh, okay. thank you. That's awesome. Uh, cool. Let's let's change tack again slightly now. Yeah. Um, is there something that you really love, but that most people seem to hate? Hmm. Or you could approach it the other way around. Is there something that you hate that most people seem to love? And it could be anything. It doesn't have nothing to do with photography. Just anything at all. No. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> I'm thinking. That... Do you both love it outside of photography? Um, do you still do you both have the same interests and hobbies? Do you both love doing the same things together? Or is there something that Raquel loves to do that that you're not keen on, Daniel? Or. Mm-hmm. There more are, or less. More, there he's, are... he's more uh, into gadgets, and you oh, know, okay. and I'm not at all. I'm a techie, techie person. I, I really don't care about even even on work. It's I use the lenses we have and the cameras we have. I know they are good, but I don't care if they if they are the top top. Or it's really as she, long as they work. He's a stable person. I am an experimental person. So when when um, during the wedding, uh, if uh, she she always shoots in in uh, in a way that she knows that gives results, and I'm more of uh, trying to do something I never did in my life before to see what kind of result that can provide me. But then this is uh, we cool. have many. I wouldn't say hobbies, but interests uh, in common, like... I'm a do-it-yourself guy, really. <laughs> I like... I started developing my, my films, um, my... my uh, right now, yeah, my analogic films, uh, right now during this pandemic. Uh, oh, cool. Something that you were promising for a long time, like, I don't know, one or two years that the films were there waiting, and he was saying, yes, he, he bought the the gimmicks and the bottles and everything like one year ago. And they were waiting. And now there was the time yeah. to do it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this it's mad how we're having, um, yeah, it, it's, it's opening different opportunities for us in a way. Um, yeah, and yeah, it's just a mad time though, isn't it? Um, another question, obviously, there's lots of questions the whole point, but... Um, when you've reached old age and you're looking back at your life, what would you like to think about the life that you've led? About the life that we? Yeah, your life. You know, when you're older and and looking back on how your life has been, how would you like to to think about it? You know, what it's yeah, it's it's kind of a, a long way of asking. What what would you want written on your gravestone, really? You know, what has been... <laughs> uh, I said before, I'm really nostalgic and... She wants a movie with every <laughs> second of her life. In... <laughs> she, wants, she wants a digital uh, I hope, graveyard. I hope then I have a lot of pictures from all the moments of, the, of my life that with no big uh, holes, uh, so that I can... So that I can uh, go back uh, to those old moments again. I hope that it may be like that because for me it's really time passing is is uh, is something that stop laughing. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> He's thinking, laughing at me. I'm thinking about my graveyard. My graveyard <laughs> will say, "I told you I was sick." <laughs> <laughs> that's funny oh i get i get the nostalgia thing though it's um yeah i understand you are you made the question so it's she's funny. almost crying <laughs> oh no sorry sorry let's change that again then what what does it's it really, mean oh sorry sorry go on Raquel. sorry i'm passing and the idea that you cannot go back you cannot i cannot have my my baby uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, uh, newborn again. Mm. They will never be newborn again, you know? Mm. Uh, it's really so hard. So it's it's really good that I have the pictures to, to get me back then. Oh, yeah. And when I'm, when I'm 90, I hope to have a lot. 
<laughs> from all eyes so that's yeah oh yeah and you'll have like grandchildren maybe and great grandchildren oh it's all good it's all good it's all good. It's all good um cool like what to, so you both of you what what does it mean to be successful to you what does success mean to you guys it means it's coming on all the time i think it's, it means uh, to be happy it's it's like a synonym synonym you know yeah. mm. so yeah. happiness you are happy you are successful enough it's not about the money it's not about uh, doing the being the best at your job for me it's nothing about that i'm, I'm I, I don't want uh, I don't want to be rich, of course. If if I could win the lottery, I wouldn't mind. But but um, and I don't want to be the best at, at my job, or I don't want to have the best car of everyone. It's it's just be smiling all the time. Yeah. Mm. If, if you are talking about um, being a happy. job, and in this case about photography, I think to be successful is to to. Enjoy doing it. To, yes. uh, when we go to which wedding, we 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 are going. We are really enjoying it. We are happy on on going. So, uh, photography, photographically speaking, in our job, for me to be successful, it means that in someone in twenty twenty five years can cry over my photos. That's what I want. I want someone to cry good tears, happy tears. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes bad because because grandparents die and uh, life changes. Sometimes for worse. Some for, sometimes for good. And uh, this this nostalgia uh, that that uh, Raquel carries on. Every one of us we carry on a little bit of this no nostalgia. And and I think that our photos are the ones that can that can provide some warm warmth to 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 the people that uh, just lost uh, her grandmother uh, or her father or someone or that just wants to remember when how how she was or how he was when he was younger and that's that's what's being su successful for me it's to 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 uh, to, to feel some really strong emotions over my photos. That's that's the my, the best gift that that's someone cool. can give me. Oh, that's cool. And I love the way you've you've both answered that in in different senses as a, a whole top down general life um, view and specifically to photography, which is lovely. And I, I agree with you both so much and, and your outlooks on it all. I think it's yeah, fantastic. Um, Let's talk about a specific element of the day. So I think people might be interested and I don't talk about it uh, that much. Um, the first dance specifically is is always something that kind of differs from a lot a lot of wedding photographers. You know, they approach the first dance very differently. So I was just wondering how you approach the first dance at all. Do you have a set kind of system or does it change all the time? Um, yeah. How do you do it? I don't have a system. I think. No, it's we have. There, there is one thing we have that is again uh, good. I think that is since we are both, we can risk a lot because uh, we will never lose it. Uh, yes, mm. one of us will for sure get something interesting, and so we can risk. Yeah. We can one can be doing something crazy, and the other one it's more more uh, secure, more. Uh, if, even safe, if we are both going for crazy things, one of it will will work. succeed. Yes, mm. but no. We here in Portugal. The, the, okay, the first dance is important, but I don't. I don't think there is a big hype around the, the, the first time. The, the first time. For me, it's it's not even one moment that stresses me. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Mm. It's interesting to hear. I think that was that was great advice. You, uh, Raquel was saying how there are there's two of you, so one of you, you you can be doing one of you can be doing the risky, or even if both of you are doing the risky shots, then you're still going to get something good. Um, that must be such a benefit of working as a duo. That really must be. Yes, and it's not. We are not uh, a photographer with a second shooter. It's mm. not that we are both uh, first, first yes. and second. Uh, mm. shooters. It's, 
you think that the second is more free to, to go? We are both doing everything yeah. and we, we, we trust each other and we know that it will work. We, we, actually, we are doing this for so long that we already almost guess what's in the other one's mind and mm. what is planning. So this yeah. gives us a lot of... Um, Simplicity. Yes, but it, 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 in the day, we are very uh, trusty of that everything is going. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that makes sense. That's cool. And yeah, and that must, yeah, exactly. And as you're saying there, it's not just for the first dance, every element of the day, you kind of, yeah, feeling and knowing what the other person is going to be doing. And you're both primary shooters. I think it's awesome. It's really cool. Um, By the way, with the, the first dances in Portugal, do they often kind of happen outside? Is Do you, I guess, do they happen outside? It's not very usual. If usually, the wedding is happening outside, yeah. yes. But usually they happen in the place where the the dancing is is uh, taking part. They, they don't do the first dance in one part and then change the okay the, and to, to a dance floor to, to a different dance floor. But uh, there are uh, we we once worked in a place that used to do like half an hour of dancing outside before right. then. They would move the dancing party, the, the, the dance part, to to the inside. But it was a specific yeah, it's, yeah, place. It's not, it's not a uh, okay. And how are you lighting your kind of dancing? Do you, do you use flash or not flash? How or do you, use it, again, change for each wedding? How, how do you do it? It's absolutely uh, natural. I, I don't use my flash. I, I have a flash, and in the night I use it for... Uh, helping on focusing but yeah. i don't flash it for i don't know maybe two years probably, oh, cool. probably the bulb it's it's, it's not <laughs> working and she doesn't even know it <laughs> it's really natural available light sometimes i mostly sh uh, shoot with available light also but some as I, as i was saying to you i'm more of an expert experimental guy so sometimes i do some crazy why some some different settings, uh, but it's it's a, an experimental stuff. The, the basis of my part of the work is also available. I, I, I really like the, the the mood that you that you get when you are using the, the dance floor light or the ambient light, even if it gets rainy and and sometimes um, uh, moved. Uh, I I don't know how to say spend. Even if it get if it gets this kind of, um, of uh, visual, and there is there is also another part that it's very important. It's the awareness that the guests have uh, towards you, towards the photographer. If you are not shooting flash, no one knows where you are. You can be there. You can you can be there dancing with someone and sh shoot her in her face, and she she won't have any discomfort with you. Uh, and if you are flashing constantly someone, um, it's very, the, you, it, are, you, it, you are very present, yeah. you, are, you are clear yeah. that there is a photographer and the guy is shooting you. And I, we don't want to, to we, have this kind of presence. Yes, we, we would be, we like to, to, to get in, to mix with the, with the guests and to be part of the yeah. party, to be in the middle of them, are, dancing if yeah. we have to. So that they are comfortable with us and they take us as a guest also. So to be invisible on the photography part, on the gadgets, it's better. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I totally agree. Totally agree. Awesome. Great advice again. Oh, guys, it's been, this has been so interesting. Um, you've shared so much. Thank you. I think we've just got time for one more question. It's quite a big one, actually. And it's not going to be the canapes question. It's going to be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think because I want to get more. You guys share just so much. So I just want to. Um, yeah. So the last question, what? And it's quite a, a top level down general question but an important one i think what what in your opinion makes a good wedding photographer Ooh. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> i would would uh, tend to answer about a good um 
documentary wedding, uh, documentary wedding photographer. And this is not uh, universal. So, uh, cool. for, so you understand, you have many kinds of wedding photographers. And the, mm. this that I, I would say may not be true for a lot of people. But for okay. me, uh, for me, I guess it's the the thing that I was saying before, the attention that you put to to what's happening in front of you, to the awareness to to be ready in every moment and to be available to go hard, to go on the floor, to uh, I don't know if, what do you have to 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 get the the photo. Mm -hmm. For me, additionally to, to this that Raquel is, is speaking, this is the way that you get to a good work. But I, I think that when uh, the most important thing for me when I'm shooting a, a wedding is to know that I'm not shooting for someone right now. I'm shooting for that person in 25 years. I'm shooting for the future people. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like a time machine. I'm I'm collecting everything that I can right now to tell a story that has his most value in a few decades when when the world is different from the world that we have now. And I think that that's the, the most yeah. of course. Um, people will will enjoy to have the pictures to put them in on Instagram and share with friends and give gifts from Christmas and all that, but uh, they will be really appreciated when time comes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's such so beautifully said. Um, I agree with both of you so much. Oh, so awesome, guys! Thank you so much for your time and your openness and the, the stories and advice. Thank you, guys. It was awesome. Thank you. It was thank really, you. really great to, to be speaking with you, and uh, thank. Thank you very much for, for your invitation to do this. It's oh, it's an honor. Thank you for, for oh, to, to talking to me. Um, if anyone's listening, yeah, whilst running or cycling or anything, do head to the site and there'll be, I'll include lots of um, your the awards in the post, uh, the specific award that we spoke about earlier as well and, and links to their websites and also a link to that blog post that they spoke, uh, wrote really beautifully recently about COVID and their, their family time together and yeah guys hopefully i'll get to see you again soon i don't know i don't know when that will be it, will, it, will it happen uh meeting in christmas December? dinner we i don't know still at the moment i don't know i think yeah hopefully but i don't i don't know Oh, that would be awesome. I would so I would be so good to see you guys again. And yeah, thank you so both so much. Um stay safe and yeah, I'll be in touch. And thank you also for Tier for, for this is reportage because it's I told you this personally, I think it's really big the this thing that you that you could do there. It's a great community, really. Yes, it's lots, really lots of teaching amazing. going on in, in this community. And sharing so, yeah. and so important for me. Mm. Thank I you, have, guys. I have friends that came from there, and yeah. this is really special. It's really and and I want to add that if someone is someone that is listening, that has the patient patience to listen to all our talking and has some some questions for us, just drop us an email or a message. We'll be we'll gladly answer. That's very kind. That's very kind. Thank you for your lovely words about TIR, and and it's an honour to have you. Such a such a massive part of it. And thanks for your offer there of of, of people uh, reaching out to you. That that's really lovely. Oh, guys, awesome. Thanks again so much. Um, yeah, stay safe and um, see you soon. Hopefully. Thank you so much. And thank you again. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. You've been listening to the 38th episode of the This Is Repertage podcast. Love talking to Raquel and Daniel. Hope you enjoyed listening. Head to thisisrepertage.com to see examples of their work and link to their website too, as well as a link to the family blog post we mentioned on the episode. 
If you're not yet a member of TIR, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 reportage awards and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers and much more. Our current round of awards deadline is very soon now. Deadline for submissions is 2359 BST on 24th of July 2020. And remember, we've just launched our brand new sister site for documentary family photography. This is Reportage Family. Our very first Family Awards submission deadline is also the same date as TIR 2359 BST on 24th of July 2020. No poses, nothing staged. This is Reportage. And this is bye for now. Mm-hmm.